If you grew up in the early 2000s, you might remember watching the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime or the card game that kids played on the playground. If you were one of these kids that played originally, but only recently got back into the card game, you may have been wondering why the cards feel different from what you remembered. This is where our story begins today. In the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh!, Upper Deck was a licensed distributor of the Yu-Gi-Oh! cards for Konami. This meant that they had authority to print and sell Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. For several years, everything ran smoothly, but in late 2008, something happened that would change everything. On October 8, 2008, Konami discovered that a third party called Vintage Sports Cards was repacking counterfeit Yu-Gi-Oh cards and reselling them. Konami was granted an injunction against Vintage, but during the discovery process, Vintage supplied evidence that Upper Deck had provided them with the counterfeit cards. It turns out Upper Deck had provided Vintage Sports Cards with over half a million counterfeit cards. Upper Deck's lawyers allegedly threatened Konami with mutually assured destruction through litigation. There were multiple lawsuits back and forth after this incident. In mid-January 2009, Upper Deck announced that Konami had not sent champion packs to them for distribution to hobby stores. Konami immediately responded with the statement that the lack of availability of champion packs to Upper Deck was because Konami had terminated the contract between the two companies and that Konami was the only authorized distributor in North America. Upper Deck still continued to make plans for product support and in late 2009 again denied the counterfeiting charge. Meanwhile, the U.S. District Court in California had also followed up with a ruling in favor of the Upper Deck Company, which temporarily stopped Konami's takeover of the worldwide version of the game. Konami then refiled the motion in the California courts against Upper Deck, citing additional evidence. When looking at the dates of these incidents, I found it interesting that Upper Deck Day, a special event hosted by Upper Deck that gave out multiple prize cards and other awesome prize support in several cities around the United States, was held just a couple of weeks after Konami had been denied takeover of the worldwide game. Was it possible that Upper Deck knew their time was short, were they attempting to squeeze as much profit and advertising out of the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG as they could before it inevitably would be taken away from them? It seems as though they were because on February 26, 2009, the California court reversed its previous ruling and granted Konami a preliminary injunction against Upper Deck, ordering the Upper Deck company to stop using Konami's trademark and to disassociate itself with the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. It was at this point that Upper Deck stopped printing Yu-Gi-Oh! cards and Konami took over. In this video, we're going to be opening the product that Vintage Sports Cards was selling with counterfeit cards from Upper Deck inside. Was it worth it, Upper Deck? I don't think so. And here is the product we have been discussing. This is the Dual 2 King, which contains three booster packs and three ultra rare cards. So I think there was like six different counterfeits. So they have these three. I don't know if these are the three you get because I think that the Dreadmaster is actually a counterfeit as well. So maybe you only get three out of the few. I'm not totally sure. But before we actually open this up, I do have examples of both the Flame Wingman and the Aquaneos. First of all, here are the two different cards. One is a legit Konami official card. Card, and one is a counterfeit upper deck card. They look pretty similar if you don't know what to look for. So here is actually the fake or counterfeit. It's not really a fake, it's a counterfeit card. There is a silver stamp and first edition. Usually silver stamp goes with unlimited. With the counterfeits, they did silver with the first edition. So that's the main way to tell the difference. And then there's also a texture difference if you look at them. So if you look at this one, very texturized, it looks really nice actually. It's a very cool looking card. The rest of the card is very similar to a regular UDE or a regular Yu-Gi-Oh card. Then if you check out this card, which I actually pulled myself out of a legit booster box. And by the way, there's a question. Can you actually pull these silver stamp ones out of booster boxes? And the answer is no. They only come in this product that we're opening today. So here is the gold gold stamp. It kind of looks silver there, but it's not. Uh, the texture, if you look at it, is a little bit different. So let's compare them side by side. So here, if you guys look at this, the texture is quite a bit more texturized, I would say, on the right one on the upper deck foil. But they're pretty close, to be honest. So the main way you want to tell is that silver stamp. And this only applies for these two ultimate rares. If you're looking at another ultimate rare from GX and it's a silver stamp, that is not a counterfeit UDE card. They only used it for these cards. And then we have a couple of the silver stamp. These are both silver stamp uh, UDE upper deck fakes. So I'm going to show you guys the texture. They do have much different texture on these. They're, they have the lines that are very easy to see when you shine it in there. This is the upper deck fake. And then I have one that I pulled. This is a graded one, so we're not going to have quite as good of a look. But if you look at the texture, it's very smooth on this one. This is a North American print. It's not like the UDE one. And then and there's a gold stamp right there. So that's the big difference between these two. So don't fall for like, uh, oh, it's textured. It's a European print. It's not. It's just the UDE upper deck. If it's silver first edition, then it's fake on these two cards. The moment we've all been waiting for. I've been wanting to open this for a while. I've had it sitting around, but I've been working on this intro and getting everything right. So here is the vintage sports cards, I believe is what they're called. Yeah. From Conroe, Texas. They repackaged all this. The cool thing is we are going to get a first edition light of destruction. I think it seems uh, those should be real cards. So that's going to be pretty cool. All trademarks are trademarks copyrighted by the 
prospective owners. That's hilarious because everything that happened. Uh, let's get into this, guys. This was pretty expensive because it's a pretty rare product. I'm going to open this up. I've never opened it before. How do you open it? Okay, so it looks like the best way is we just go like this. And then you can open it from the top. Okay, that is the way you open it. It's kind of weird. It's like a hanger thing. Inside we have the... Okay, they're all like... Oh, there's a glass pack in here, first edition too. That's pretty awesome. The packaging is definitely third party. I mean, you can tell it for sure. And then here are our cards. So it looks like these are just the three cards we get. So we didn't get a flame wingman. I guess it shows you which three you get. You can potentially get the flame wingman. You can get the uh, aqua neos and stuff like that. So we got the dreadmaster. This is another one that can be faked. All right. So here is the dreadmaster. This also has the silver stamp. So I think dreadmaster, I think like water dragon maybe is one of them. Uh, all right. That might be all of the foils you can get that are faked. There could be a couple more that I'm missing, but this is another counterfeit UDE. It's kind of weird they picked an ultra rare for that one. And then there's a couple of uh, these. Are these also fakes? The white horn dragon and mist body? These are from McDonald's packs. These are legit cards, which is interesting. So I really don't know a lot about this product. So it is kind of weird how these are just in here like with tape on them, but it's also just a third party product. So I don't know if that's normal or not. It's really hard to find info on this product, but I do know that this is where they came from. So I guess if you get the elemental hero flame wingman, it would just be in the front. You'd be able to see that you got it and i guess most of them just weren't kept sealed because the only ones on ebay have these three cards in the front so still some mystery there we don't really know exactly but i mean we still have the booster packs here which is cool so we're gonna open these up the really cool part though is the fact that it's all those fakes that they literally just i mean they, they faked real cards to be promos in a third party packaging it just wasn't a smart idea but it's pretty crazy how it all went down i mean we lost our upper deck print quality which was sad because that was really awesome i mean the cards back then were super quality but then they decided to Throw it down the drain for no reason. So here we go. Let's see. We got the Ojama Yellow. Z-Metal Tank. Will we get anything good? Infernal Incinerator. I didn't even realize this was in here. Okay. Uh, Ojama Delta Hurricane and the Arm Changer. So that's not too crazy. But LODT and Glass. I mean, those are some big... Can you imagine if we bought like a counterfeit pack and like we get like a magic formula or something insane? Like, can you imagine that? I can imagine it. I'm trying to right now. Let's see if we can do it. We have a Interdimensional Warp. First Edition Gladiator's Assault. These are really crazy packs. A cloudy and smoke ball over limit the fog control gambler of legend light imprisoning mirror that's a pretty good card truck roid cloudy and cheap cloud so we did get a foil a super rare cloudy and cheap cloud first edition we will take that out of our fake package that's pretty cool and that leaves us finally with light of destruction first edition i hope you guys have enjoyed this video it's more educational but there is a nice opening at the end that hopefully ends in a ghost rare i mean who knows maybe a judgment dragon you never know it could happen first edition i'm down if you guys didn't see when we opened 24 of these packs go check that video out that was an insane one we have a dice try. It's like, nice try. You didn't get the Flame Wing Man. Deformation. Got the Raging Cloudian. Arcana Call. Arcana Force for the Emperor. Rainbow Gravity. Interdimensional Interplanetary Invader A. There we go. Golden Ladybug. Is that it? And the Arcana Force 7. So the Golden Ladybug is pretty cool. I think it's actually worth a couple of bucks. What do you expect? It's, it's a counterfeit repackage. What, what, what can we expect here? <laughs> If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Shout out to TCG, Trust Your Cards, Stonefoot Show, Tomato Juice, Stanley, Mike Nance, Mimic Gecko, Daxter, Ian Bussie, Junior Barding, Anana Tai Show, JT Cho, and David FJ. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.